These are Stefano and Dennis, and my name is Jürgen. We would like to welcome everybody attending our presentation. In the next few minutes, we will show you how you can solve a specific portfolio selection problem, or more precisely, how you can construct an enhanced index tracking portfolio that optimizes the trade-off between tracking error and access return. For this purpose, we formulated a mixed integer quadratic program that considers several requirements of investors. To solve the formulated program afterwards, we developed a two-stage hybrid approach. Furthermore, we used real-world data to get more realistic portfolios. But let's start with the outline of our presentation. First, I would like to introduce our team. Then I'm going to explain the portfolio selection problem. In section four, Stefano will present our solution approach in more detail. Then in section five and six, Dennis will present our results and draw some conclusions. Let tell me you who we are. All of us have done or are doing the master degree at the University of Bern in Switzerland with specialization in financial management. All of us have already gained some work experience in banking, and we developed this solution approach as part of our master thesis. And now to the portfolio selection problem. This figure here show an overview of the upcoming portfolio selection problem. We start with a given portfolio. Over a given investment horizon, we periodically rebalance the portfolio to the current market situation. For this purpose, we use at each rebalancing date the most recent data from a given stock market index. At the end, we evaluate the performance of the rebalance portfolio at each rebalancing date. Since turnover costs arise from the rebalancing, we must take them into account in the performance evaluation. At each rebalancing date, the following information is given. We know the stock market index constituents and also their weights in the index. Then we know different risk and performance measures of each stock. And we know the sector and market cap quantile for each stock. Our objective at each rebalancing date is to adjust the portfolio such that the trade-off between the net access return and the tracking error is optimized. But as you can see here, there are numerous constraints that must be satisfied by our rebalanced portfolio. All right. In this section, I will present you our solution approach we used to rebalance the portfolio at each date. Let me start with the MAQP formulation and thereby with the notation. I won't go through everything because there's a lot, so let me just point out the most important ones. We use the set, the set I, which, which contains all stocks from the index. However, in our approach, we just use a subset of them, which we denote in I prime. Furthermore, we have the parameter W bench, which is the benchmark weight of each stock. And additionally, we implemented the parameter costs, which is the transaction cost for rebalancing. Our main decision variables consists of W, the, weight, uh, the, the stock weight in the portfolio, and D, the active weight of each stock. The remaining decision variables are auxiliary variables, which we use to model all the constraints. The objective at each rebalancing date is to minimize the trade-off between the tracking error and the net access return. The first two lines represent the tracking error. Since we used only a subset of all stocks, we had to adjust the formulation because all stocks which are not in this subset have a weight of zero and therefore still an active weight of minus its index weight. The following two lines represent the net access return. We called it net since we directly include the costs for rebalancing in our formulation. This is done to prevent from high rebalancing costs. Let me proceed to the constraints. We mostly use the formulation from the problem statement, so I won't go through everything. I will just point out the differences we implemented. Also why the constraints 
there is uh, there's the change by using a subset. So like in a constraint four, we used minus the benchmark weight for all stocks which are not in this subset. Further, we have constraints eight where the binary decision variable set is activated and it is one if a stock is included in the portfolio and zero if not. Further, constraints eight also sets a minimum and a maximum portfolio weight. So putting all together, or just like one further, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, constraint 13 defines the upper bound for the tracking error. However, there is also a lower bound for the tracking error, which we could not incorporate in our MAQP because the problem will be non-convex and therefore not solvable by a solver. I will address this in the next section. Further, and finally, we have constraints 14 and 15, which defines the turnover for each stock. So putting that all together, we have our MAQP formulation, which we incorporate in our hybrid approach. So let me proceed to our approach. Our approach has two stages. In the first stage, we create an initial solution by maximizing the net excess return only. In the second stage, we add a local branching constraint to our formulation and minimize then the trade-off. In both stages, we use an algorithm to select a subset and the algorithm also decides whether we accept or reject the solution. Let me go a little more in the de into the details. In the first stage, we ignore the trade uh, we ignore the tracking error and only focus on maximizing the net access return. Doing that, we want to achieve a portfolio with a high tracking error so the lower bound is satisfied. This flowchart shows how stage one works. The algorithm starts by selecting a subset. However, since there are a lot of constraints, we cannot just randomly put stocks into that subset. So what we do is we first include the stocks from the portfolio prior rebalancing because this portfolio has been valid the last, um, the last period, so it should be also valid in this period. Finally, the algorithm also adds some random stocks to it. And then a solver solves the MAQP and the resulting portfolio is checked for its tracking error. If the tracking error is below the lower limit, the algorithm bans the stock with the lowest variance from future subset. With that, we won't increase the chance to get a higher tracking error than the lower bound. And repeating all the steps, we finally get a, a portfolio which, is, which has a tracking error higher than the lower bound, so this, the algorithm accepts it and proceeds to stage two. In stage two, the objective function is changed back to minimizing the trade-off. Additionally, we include a local branching constraint. The local branching constraints on the left side counts how many, how many stocks may be included, excluded, or exchanged from the best feasible solution. On the right-hand side, there is a limit for these changes, which also determines the neighborhood of the best feasible solution, which the solver can can search for improvement. The intuition about these steps is by using the local branching constraint and using a subset, we make the problem less complex and hence we can accelerate the solving process and the algorithm can evaluate many different solutions. Also here we have the flowchart how stage two works. Um, after each iteration, there are basically two outcomes. So let me go through both. We start with a first feasible solution and the algorithm checks if the termination criterion is satisfied. In the next step, he checks if the tracking error is below the limit and if a new best feasible solution has been found in terms of the objective function value. In the first iteration, we do not have a, a reference solution, so the algorithm accepts this solution. Further, he sets the neighborhood size to its initial size because we will increase it later and then sets up a subset which includes all the stocks which has been selected in the best feasible solution. Additionally, some randomly selected stocks are added to the subset and finally, the solver solves the MAQP again. Now, in this case, we assume that the resulting portfolio has a tracking error which is below the lower limit or is not better than the reverence solution. 
In that case, the algorithm rejects the solution and then may increase the neighborhood or not depending if a certain limit is already exceeded or not. By increasing the neighborhood size, we give more possibilities to the solver to improve the best feasible solution. What is done next is the subset contains, uh, again, the stocks from the best feasible solution. However, new randomly selected stocks are added to it. And in the next step, the portfolio is again solved. And the whole process starts again until a termination criterion is satisfied. And in the end, what the algorithm does, it returns the best portfolio we found with the best known trade-off between tracking error and net access return. Okay. So now let me report you the most important insights about our implementation and the results of our approach. Uh, most of the parameter values, as well as the benchmark, the rebalancing points, and the time limit of three minutes were given already by the problem statement itself. However, uh, we're f we were free to choose the value of additional parameters of our model, as well as the lambda value. As you can see, we choose a rather large lambda value since we noticed that for smaller values, it happens from time to time that the tracking error of the portfolio um, lies under the 5% threshold. Um, we implemented and performed our optimization by using the IMPL software and run it with the Kurabi solver. Um, although realizing a positive return, um, the results of our portfolio are lower than the one of the benchmark, leading to a negative analyzed ex um, excess return. And the sharp ratio of our portfolio is positive, but since it's lower than the benchmark, this means that the relation between the return and the incorrect risk was better in the benchmark. And when we watch this figure about the cumulative returns over time, we can basically see that generally um, our portfolio had this followed the same movements as the benchmark. However, especially with increasing, um, with later rebalancing points, there was a negative deviation of our portfolio from the benchmark. One reason could rely on the alpha scores, since this value estimates they strongly affect the performance of our, um, of our portfolio, and so the quality is really important. Moreover, the gap could partially also be explained by the transaction cost due to rebalancing, which affect our portfolio but doesn't affect the benchmark returns. Now let me summarize our work and make some recommendations about um, based on the knowledge we gained by solving this um, optimization task. Um, we constructed a hybrid approach um, which first finds a feasible solution and then tries to improve it as long as the termination criteria is not met. Although we didn't uh, made an outperformance with our portfolio. We are able at any rebalancing points to construct a portfolio which met and satisfied all the constraints and also had a quite low tracking error which was below, uh, which was closed but above the, the lower bound given. Um, two ways to improve the results could be, for example, by, um, al oh, sorry. by allowing a higher CPU time and run the optimization, and secondly, to perform, to perform a parameter tuning approach to find the best fits of the parameter values to solve the optimization. Um, about the recommendations, um, we advise um, that it can be interesting to use integrated approaches by applying um, exact methods and also um, heuristic approaches to solve portfolio selection problems and may solve them at different stages as we did. Uh, secondly, we were troubling a lot with the lower bound for the tracking error and our advice would be to maybe um, drop it to really uh, be, being able to find an efficient portfolio at any given point of time. Um, what was very important for us also is that we um, wanted to avoid to have very uh, higher transaction costs in a second moment, so we already considered them directly in the objective function. Yeah, we underline once again the importance of the input data, um, such as the alpha scores and the covariance metrics, since a model can be good, but if the input data isn't of that big quality, then it's difficult to um, reach a good performance. And last, um, since we have um, some uncertainties that I just mentioned, it could be also interesting to use stochastic programming approaches to 
maximize the expected return under fast changing environments. We thank you a lot for your attention and we are now happy to answer your questions.